He travels the state with exotic animals, teaching children in classrooms and at parties about the care and the protection of animals and some of the fascinating things they can do. Mr. Drew and his animals too stopped by our studio recently, which forced us to face a few fears of our own. These are axolotls. They're a salamander from Mexico and they're extinct in the wild. Uh, and that's a recent thing. They're still questioning if there's any left, but pretty much in the last few years, they haven't trapped any. What's really cool about these, that, and people are studying these, why? Yeah, these guys are an amazing animal because they're the only vertebrate animal in the world that can regenerate pretty much everything. Um, some lizards can lose their tail and grow it back. These guys can regrow eyes, brains, spinal cords, nervous systems, and no other animal with a backbone can do that. So scientists want to know how this happens. We get into a car accident, traumatic brain injury, um, you know, paralyzed, loss of limb, and we need a transplant and we can regenerate everything in a year. That would be an amazing thing, and scientists want to know, and that's why they're not extinct in captivity. And this light-colored one is actually engineered to be that shade? Well, it's selective breeding can get through the process. That's called a leucistic. It actually has blue eyes, so it's not an albino. But what was engineered on this, this is a genetically modified organism, what was engineered was the, um, they added a gene so that they could study the animal without having to kill it. Uh, they wanted to know certain things, and by using a UV black light, this animal glows in the dark. And so scientists could observe it without having to kill each different level of development. Okay, we should move on to our next creature here. Yeah, we've got more to go. This is fascinating. We could talk about this all day, but why don't we put, the, can we just all put right. these yeah, aside we'll over here? Over, yeah. And uh, why don't you bring out the next critter that you brought in. That I'm least looking forward We're to. We're not sure if Amanda's gonna be zipping right through oh, the okay. wall. Yeah. Here she may, she may. All right, so this is a Chilean rose hair tarantula, and this is a very misunderstood animal because movies really don't do them any favors. People understand, learn about spiders through movies, and these guys here are so gentle. They're a gentle giant. Could they I put don't it on want my to bite. Hand? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. What she's gonna do is we're gonna put her there. And she's actually probably gonna stop That's because right. what she's doing is she's actually smelling you right now. Her feet actually can smell it. She's a ground spider. So she's like trying to figure out, wait a minute, who is this? What's going on? She, rather than biting, which you know she could if you were to start in a squeezer and you were hurting her, mm -hmm. she'd feel threatened, she might bite. But other than that, they only bite things to eat. All right. Should we tell her you've eaten one? Can I, t okay. If I we touch know. the top she, of her, well, you want to be careful. No, she Amanda won't. is really scared mm -hmm. of spiders. And, yes. and I get that, I'm not keen on them myself. Would you like to just hold it in your hand? No, I don't The think thing so. is, if you, you touch her, if you pet her, these hairs are called urticating hairs, and they can actually cause a rash. Or okay, then it's I like fiberglass insulation. It's okay. So it's right, you know, if you disturb them, but if you hold her, she won't shed them. Natural habitat for this creature? Um, they live in a very dry region from um, uh, South America and, and uh, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> from <laughs> from Chile, South America, and uh, they're very docile. They just want to eat bugs, and that's the beauty of spiders: is is they're not out to get us. They don't chase us. They don't attack us. They don't do any harm to humans because they're not. We're not good eating. We're not good eating. We're yeah. junk food. So these guys here are actually fantastic uh, for eradicating insects. All spiders, we need them. They're the uh, the best thing we have for insect control and uh, prevention of disease. Okay, Drew, if you had said ten minutes ago that Amanda would actually be touching the tarantula, I would have given you five hundred dollars and said no way. But you, <laughs> you won her over. He he said, if I'm doing my job right, you won't be that scared. Yeah. They're so. incredibly gentle animals. All right. It's just a matter of understanding Clearly them. you know what you're doing. Let's go to one more, and this is the animal that's going to freak me out. Do you want to so. switch sides Yeah, there? actually, you know, I kind of would. I kind okay. of would. Just uh, <laughs> to have you as a protective layer, let this one eat you, devour you first, wrap itself around you oh, first. Oh, oh look at this. This is Nagini. She's a Dumeril's boa, or also known as a Madagascar oh. ground boa, and she is an amazing animal. Oh, For her size, right she is you. one of the strongest snakes in the world. Even okay? though she will not get any bigger than this, she just wants to stretch out because she's a ground boa. Most snakes would curl up or something. She likes to be stretched right out. Now, her coloration yes. blends in perfect with dead, uh, the dead leaves on the ground and stuff, and she's just curious right now on what's going on. Now, she's smelling is, things. We'll bring her back so you don't have to worry. How does she end up <laughs> in Maine? Well, these guys are bred in captivity, and up to 2017, they were actually <laughs> illegal in Maine. Oh, getting to it's know you. It's fresh under my <laughs> sport hey coat here, Drew. Hey, now. <laughs> bring her around. There we go. So, yeah, these guys are bred in captivity. We no longer take them from the wild. Jeez. Madagascar is very well protected, so we don't take them. These are captive bred animals. She's used to being handled. Children touch her, stuff like that. 
and she's a wonderful animal for explaining the ecosystem of Madagascar when I go to schools. Um, and just in general, she's just a docile, docile snake. These, they're not aggressive. And a lot of the education that you do with kids especially is kind of talking about how these animals end up in Maine and, and some of the, the problems that they go through to get here. And you rescue a lot of these animals. Yeah. What's we, the big thing you want kids to know? Well, the, the key thing is, is first of all, knowledge. I mean, understanding. Uh, it, once we understand an animal, we're less likely to fear it. If we don't fear it, then we're not going to hurt it. And this way here, we can start protecting environments, conservation, things like that. Uh, my big thing, focus when I talk to kids is about not releasing exotic animals into the Maine woods. Maine woods belong to Maine animals, not these guys. It's not fair to them, it's not fair to the Maine animals. So we talk about that and we just talk about responsibility. That's the key thing, is just being a responsible individual. One final quick question. Amanda's wigged out by the spiders. I get wigged out by snakes. Mm -hmm. Is there any creature that wigs you out? Ooh. The IRS. <laughs> 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 Not any animal, no, because I understand body language and I watch them and, uh, you know, I, I, I understand them. I just learn about them and, and so nothing really scares me animal-wise. Um, you know, it's just a matter of understanding and observing. You did well, I'll say. You did really well because that snake was getting all up in your well, was going right, right up under my sport coat, up into my armpit. It was a very, very uncomfortable feeling. But yeah. you did you did great with the tarantula because I know that you, you got no love for the tarantulas. <laughs> it's not that I don't love them; it's that they freak me out. It's the like the legs, but yeah. he's he's so good at explaining. You know, like look at her eyes. Look how small her eyes are because she's a ground spider and she yeah. hides and waits for her prey. And yeah, I mean, if she I did hold her after the segment. For the record, I faced my fear. Um, but if she had been moving around and crawling, I would have, I probably would have dropped her. <laughs> we really enjoyed our time with Mr. Drew. You can learn more about him and his interactive exhibit in Lewiston by heading to the 207 section of our website or mobile app.